What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's Darian. This is Darian the Dev and today we're going to be doing another C Sharp Code Challenge where we're going to be checking for anagrams. This one's going to be checking for anagrams, um, which basically means do the letters, do two different words contain the same letters. So can I take the letters that are in word number one and rearrange them to make word number two. And if so, then that's an anagram. So we're gonna write a function that takes two strings and it's gonna return either true or false if the word is an anagram. So let's go ahead and jump over into the code, guys. Um, we're gonna return a Boolean, as you see right here, and we're gonna take in two strings, string number one, string number two. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna make a variable to hold the number of letters in the first word, which is going to be called count. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because obviously if we're gonna have two words that can contain the same letters, then they need to have the same number of letters, right? So if there's a mismatch between how many letters there are in word number one and word number two, then it's not gonna be an anagram, right? So we're gonna do a variable for the count of the first word, so that's gonna be our count, and then our second integer variable is going to be second word count or I'll just say second count so that's gonna be the count of how many letters are in the second word because if those don't match then we don't have an anagram obviously so um, so that's the reason why I'm gonna make two variables to hold the letter count and then we're obviously just gonna make a boolean value called anagram and let's just set it to false to begin with so uh, that's what we're gonna return we're gonna return anagram uh, depending on what happens between these two strings they give us so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to loop through the first string. Uh, whoops, so we're gonna say for int i equals zero, we're gonna say uh, i is less than str1 dot length minus one. So again, guys, um, str dot, uh, str1 dot length minus one is all that is saying is that however many letters that they give us in the string, we're always gonna have more than uh, they give us um, if we do str1.length. We're always gonna have one more um, in this scenario than we actually have. So if they give us a six letter word or string, we're gonna have seven indexes because the index is gonna start at zero. So we're always gonna say string.length minus one because we want to actually loop through this the same number of times that they have letters in the word. So we don't wanna have a mismatch there because if we do string.length, then we'll always come up one letter short. So we won't we won't get the right count for the word, if that makes sense. So um, we're gonna do I++, plus plus. we're gonna increment I for each uh, letter that's in the word. So for each letter, for each time we loop through this uh, first word, we're gonna wanna say count plus plus because we want to uh, keep track of how many numbers, or I'm sorry, we're gonna keep track of how many letters are in that word. So we're gonna say count plus plus. And then we're gonna set the second count equal to str1.length minus one. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, str2.length. Sorry, so we're gonna say um, for, every, for every word you come across, um, inside of str1 every letter you come across in str1 we're gonna add it up and count and then we're gonna set our variable of our second count to the length minus one of the second word so however many letters are in that second word is now going to become our second word count variable because of this piece of code right here all right now we're going to do some conditional logic right and say how do we know if these two words are going to have the same letters and how do we know if they can be rearranged in the first word to make up the second word and vice versa, right? So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna do an if statement. We're gonna wanna do an if statement where we check for some conditional logic. So we're gonna wanna say if str2 dot contains, so this is a C sharp method that allows us to check inside of whatever str2 is gonna be. So we're gonna say if str2 contains str1 of i, so right now, str1 of i is what our first loop is going through. So if the second word contains anywhere in that word, um, the letter that we're currently looping on in the first string, we know that's a good sign, right? Because we're, we wanna check to make sure they have the same letters, but that's not the only condition we're gonna check for. We're gonna say, if the second word contains any other letters that are in the first word and 
So we're gonna make it, you know, even more difficult to fall outside these constraints. We're gonna really check for specifically if everything matches up. So if the second word contains any of the letters that are in the first word, and also if count, why does that keep going up there like that? Sorry guys. And if count equals second count, then we're gonna say anagram equals true. And the reason for that is because if the second word contains every single letter str of i from the first word and they have the same number of letters in those words, then we know that it's an anagram. So we're gonna say true. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and just return anagram. And we shouldn't even have to say else false because it's false by default. So we should be able to just return anagram here and pass the test case. So let's see. All right, we got an issue. Symbol and 14. Oh, whoops, sorry guys. Double equals right there. All right, cool. So now we don't even need to return. Uh, we, don't, we don't even need to say else if uh, anagram equals false because we set it to false up here. So it's already false by default. And the last thing we're gonna wanna do is up here in this editor, um, we always have to, when we use certain methods, we always have to say uh, using system and or using system.link because these are um, the collections that hold some of the methods that we're using in here. So we have to say system and system link up top. So we check this now guys, hopefully we should pass and we do. So I'll leave my code right here, but essentially you guys see how we did this. We just took a variable that counted each letter that was in the first word, took another variable that counted how many letters are in the second word. And then we just have a true or false Boolean called anagram that will tell us either if they are an anagram or if they aren't. And then all we're doing is seeing is if the second word contains every letter that the first word has, and they both have the same number of letters total, then we're gonna say that's an anagram. So that's pretty much the approach that I took you guys. If you have a better way or a more efficient way or a shortcut you guys wanna show me or some methods I might not know about that could have helped me out with this, please go ahead and leave it down in the comment section below guys. I love learning from you guys and interacting and talking to you. So go ahead and leave me some suggestions down there. If this video was helpful at all, leave me a like, some thumbs up, subscribe guys. It helps me with the motivation of this channel. When I see the numbers growing and you guys are coming back and saying this content is helpful because that's the whole reason why I'm doing it. I hope that somebody can take something away from this and seeing the code actually helps out. So yeah, guys, uh, until next time in the next video, I'll see you. This is Darian, and uh, this is Darian the Dev, all right? See you guys.